just so you know, you are legally being recorded, and I just had to tell you that, okay? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Um, so, my work tried to do some fucking bullshit like this. We're doing like a meeting, right? And this bitch was recording, like, and I, like, I had to stop her like 30 minutes. I was like, hey, are we recording? And she was like, yeah. I was like, you realize you have to let us know that you're recording us. Like, you can't just record us. Like, that shit's against the law. And she said, and what did she say? She was all apologetic, man. <laughs> she was like, oh my God, I was, I'm sorry. This was just for our records. I was like, yeah, well, you just still got to let motherfuckers know. Anyways, five, <laughs> four, three, two. And welcome back, guys. UFC Apex 4. We told you it was right around the corner. Here we are now. We're going to preview it. Top to bottom, it looks like a very good card. Obviously, the main event, Dustin Poirier, Dan Hooker. Those two men could very easily be next in line after Justin Gaethje and Khabib Nurmagomedov finish their unfinished business. Co-main event, Mike Perry is back in the house, this time against Mickey Gall. Let's just get into it, okay? Well, yeah, let's, exactly. let's just talk about the fucking I, I elephant want in the talk room. Oh, main events so bad. Like this is what I that's all I want to talk about. I want to still talk about a co main event. Listen, it, it's it, it's one of the more interesting situations I've ever heard of in MMA. Now, this wasn't his wife, right? The, he no, 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 his no. wife. That's a, that's a new one. Okay. So for those of you who have been living underneath a rock for the past couple of weeks, Platinum Mike Perry plans on taking his apparent new girlfriend into the octagon with him. Or not, you know, with him, but as his corner. Yeah. Just her. Just her. That's it. Just her. Now, Waleed, I mean, you have a little more information on this. Just go ahead and just break it down for us. You know, let's talk about it right now. You know, I just want to 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 say exactly what he said um, when he was interviewed by Ariel Hawani because it's the funniest thing I ever heard. He said she's like when Ariel asked him why she's going to be like uh, in his corner, and he said like she will only be he will she will be the only one in his corner. He, he said she's just a tough peanut butter cup chocolate chip cookie. And she has experience in boxing and wrestling. Believe it or not, she wrestled in high school. Listen. Peanut he, butter, chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. Snickerdoodle. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like on social media, like the fans been shitting all over him. Uh, when you, If you read the comments, you've been telling him like, why are you dating a high school girl? Or like, she's still in college. Why the fuck are you dating her? You know, <laughs> because she looked pretty young. And he doesn't give a fuck. And he's taking it to a whole new level by having her, just her. Remember when, remember when he started... He went to a uh, actually actually legit team, a legit a legit gym, and people were talking like, "Oh, maybe Mike Perry is going to a whole new level and stuff like that." And people got pretty excited. He Cowboy. You know? He was at Jackson. Yeah, Lake. exactly. And that was when Cowboy and Jackson kind of split. Yeah, and when he fought, uh, now he's back with that, his fucking girlfriend in South Florida. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. All right. When he and when he fought his uh, the the Brazilian cowboy and destroyed him, I believe it was under the some great coaching, you know, and it was maybe one of his best performances. But now we are back at it again with the girlfriend. Come on, Mike Perry. Like I love the guy, and you know, only him can do that. Let's get into this card because it, yeah. it, it's a very good card. Two women making their UFC debut. Former Invicta fighter Kay Harrison is stepping in to take on former Invicta strawweight champion Jean Yufre. Now, we don't know a whole lot about these two women. Kay is 20 years old. She fights out of 10th Planet Buena, or what does it say? Buena Park. And yeah. Jin Frey, obviously, she's a former Invicta strawweight champion. She relinquishes that Invicta title to get this UFC call up. This is an interesting fight because we don't know what you know we're gonna get of either two women. Now, this is on a much bigger stage than Invicta. Obviously, because of COVID nineteen, we're not gonna have any fans. So having you know the fans there and the roar of the crowd isn't gonna play a huge factor into the you know jitters, I guess you could say. But it's still, you know, the name on the canvas. You're still got, you know, big time people calling your fights. 
you know, DC, Michael Bisbing, you know, Felder obviously has called a lot of these fights. I mean, this is a whole different ball game. This is the big leagues. You know, one of these two women are really going to showcase herself. And we could really see a huge, huge strawweight star be born. Yeah, exactly. And in one way, it's a huge step up for both fighters. In the other way, they are, they come from the same place. So, yes. you know, pretty Eventually, good. Eventually, they were going to meet up anyways. Exactly. So yeah. In the featherweight division, Jordan Griffin is going to be taking on Yusef Zala. Now, Jordan Griffin had a very bumpy start to his UFC career, but he was able to bounce back last outing against downtown TJ Brown having a very, very nice guillotine choke from the bottom. Now, Jordan Griffin looks to carry this into a two-fight winning streak. What do you think he has to do against Yusef? So, if I'm not wrong, uh, Yusef fought maybe a couple of months ago, I remember, and, he f and you know, his performance was pretty legit. We talked about... He's a very his young kid, too. He's 23. Yeah. And we talked about the kickboxing back in Morocco. I told you, like, in Morocco, like, kickboxing is huge it's like yes. some sort of religion back there you know with bother hari being you know the top dog in the kickboxing world so uh yusuf zalal is actually a pretty good fighter uh jordan griffin is actually a tough fight for him i feel like maybe the strike striking wise i won't be surprised if yusuf have a slight advantage and uh yeah we will see jordan have more fights you know more experience so I guess we'll find out. Now uh, we have Takashi Saito welcoming Raz Ramiz Baremaj. I just butchered his name <laughs> into the UFC on Saturday night. Now, obviously, we know very little about both of these contenders, but this is also a fight that you have to watch out for. Uh, yeah. Takashi Saito obviously has you know been there for a while. He, if you're not a big hardcore fan, you probably don't know a whole lot about him. He's probably flown under the radar to you guys. But for us, you know, we've seen his name here now at least a couple yeah. times in the UFC. Ramiz, obviously completely unknown <clears throat> to us, at least on the West Coast. He's from Houston, Texas, I believe. Eight and two as a pro. He is a young kid. He's 27. You know, he's still going into his prime. They're pretty much virtually identical. They're both 5'8", obviously weighing in at 170 pounds and have that 73-inch reach. Now, I, I couldn't tell you either way who's going to win this fight, but this could be one of those fights that you should look out for because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, and it's uh, like you said, this is the kind of fights you know we have in the prelims. Uh, you discover fighters. Maybe one of them will be a future star. Who knows? Maybe one of them will you know pop up in the being a top-ranked fighter. Who knows? So... Pretty interesting matchup, and you know, yeah, of course, you need to watch this fight, you know, to to see to learn about these fighters. Now, obviously, we talked about staying active. <clears throat> Felipe Lins is doing just that. He yeah. just fought a couple weeks ago, uh, the same card as Anthony Smith. Now he's stepping in again against Tanner Bozer. Now these two gentlemen have both had very extensive U or you know careers before they ever stepped into the UFC. Bozer obviously fighting all over the world. Felipe Lins being the former heavyweight champion of PFL, winning that million dollar tournament. Both these two gentlemen can, can catapult themselves into a top 15 matchup very easily. Felipe Lins looked good against Andre Arlovsky. Obviously wasn't able to get the W yeah. that night. He was, you know, uh, on the short end of a unanimous decision. But I, I really think Tanner Bozer is definitely the right talent level for him i think bozer wins the fight but i think felipe lens gives us a better showing yeah this is a fun matchup and i like i said i always enjoy having a heavyweight fight in the prelims because i feel like uh it brings out some like some excitement because sometimes in the prelims you don't feel like you will have a finish or even even though it's uh, it's a uh, fake news you know you always have finishes in the prelims but having them you know it gets you you know pretty much a little bit more excited you know for the for the the next fights so yeah interesting matchup Felipe Lins, like you said lost to Arlovsky but 
quite look good in that fight. Maybe in this fight he will look even better. And he's also look looked better. very good before he made it to the UFC. He looked very good in PFL. He's 14 yeah. and 4. He trains out of American Top Team. The guy is a real deal heavyweight. Uh, get a couple wins in the heavyweight division, you're right in the thick of things. Yeah. In the women's flyweight division, there was a matchup against Maria Barrella Varela. She was facing Miranda Maverick. Obviously, Miranda Maverick was making her UFC debut from Invicta. Miranda was unfortunately sidelined from this fight due to injury. I know that they're trying to scramble last minute to find Maria Romero Barella a replacement. I don't know if they're going to be able to do that in a couple days, but you never know what's going to happen. So obviously, there's a flyweight fight still open for a woman who was willing to jump in there and take that fight. Now, this next fight, I think has the makings of Fight of the Night written all over it. Luis Pena versus Kama Worthy is an amazing fight. We've obviously interviewed Kama Worthy before on this show. This dude is amazing, has great power, left and right hand. He made a huge splash against Devontae Smith in his very first UFC fight. Obviously, Luis Pena has looked amazing since being on The Ultimate Fighter. He injured himself on The Ultimate Fighter some saying that he could have won the entire show. Yeah. Now he's probably one of the more successful guys from that season and one of the only guys still around in the UFC. What do you think is going to happen here in this main event of the prelim portions? Do you think the power of Kama Worthy is going to be enough or do you think it's going to be the length and the precision of Luis Pena that serves to be very, very difficult for Kama Worthy to understand? I feel like maybe this is the toughest fight Luis Pena ever had, and this is his only night MMA professional fight, and that's crazy for me because Kama Worthy is a very, very, very dangerous fighter. So I you can't it on come this in... show in his yeah. very first fight that he was going to go in there and have a big, big knockout, and you then have count him out. I would not count him out. I yeah. would not count him out at all this dude obviously he was counted out in his very first he was i believe it was the biggest underdog of the night he yeah. went in there and showed that he shouldn't have ever ever been placed in those underdogs now i have a question for you louis Pena might have an answer for you no yeah maybe i think you have <laughs> louis Pena is 26 uh only had like 10 mma f- professional fights you know mm-hmm. uh do you think that maybe he jumped in the UFC a little bit too early. Do you think that maybe if he had those fights outside the UFC, maybe it would have been better for him? What do you think? I don't. I, I don't know. I I do see where you're coming from. You know, yeah. when you get into the UFC, there are no easy matchups, especially in that 155 pound division. You're getting killers from day yeah. one, and you're going to continue to get killers from you know the point until you're you know asked to leave. So. Would he have served himself? But he might have obviously gotten more experience, gotten more cage time underneath him. Would it have made him a better fighter? Would it have made him a smarter fighter? I don't know. Would he have ever met DC? Would he have he had ever went to AKA had he not gone that route? Would yeah. he be the fighter he is today had he not done what he did? So there's a lot of variables. I think everything happened for a reason, and I think he's exactly where he's supposed to be. Because he is right now in the toughest division in the UFC. Uh, we all know that there's, you know, that li- that lightweight division, man, it's, you know, even unranked fighters, they are straight killers. They have the potential to be champion in any other organization, like any other. Look at Justin Janus walks in here a couple of days notice and knocks out Frank Camacho, who everyone was very high on. Yeah. Come on. So, uh, but, uh, you know, other than that, that's a pretty, like, legit crazy fight that we are having for the main event in the prelims like you said potentially fight of the night for me the main event will be the fight of the night but i i get your point 100 i mean this definitely has the makings of fight of the night written all over it now sean woodson was originally supposed to be fighting uh what's his name uh kyle nelson had him on the yeah. show before Kyle Nelson, because of visa issues due to the coronavirus, is unable to make it to the U.S., steps in Julian Arosa. Now, Julian Arosa is a huge step up in competition for Sean Woodson. Sean Woodson has only had seven professional MMA fights, where Julian Arosa has lost nine fights and has won 22. Yeah. This is a uh, 
great way to start the uh, man, the main card, right? This I first... think if Sean Woodson can have a very emphatic victory here, he yeah. could really put himself on the map at the 145 pound division. He'd be eight and zero. He he's really fighting a true, you know, 145 pound stud. You know what I mean? Maybe not a stud, but at least a top 20 guy. Yeah, being now, eight and zero in the UFC is 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 great. Like you know, you have that undefeated record. Like it can push you to have bigger fights. You know, just because you have that O. Exactly. It, it, look at Sean O'Malley. Yeah, exactly. Now in the heavyweight division, John Volante. Ben's favorite fighter is getting his very, very first shot at a heavyweight against Maurice Green, the Crochet Boss. Now, for real, listen, the Crochet Boss is a legit heavyweight. I know he drank a lot of beer on the Ultimate Fighter, but he has been a heavyweight for a very long time. Yeah. John Volante is just now stepping into the heavyweight division. Is he stepping into the heavyweight division because maybe he gained too much weight during this quarantine? I know he had talked about going to heavyweight before, but is he doing it the right way is what I'm asking. Do you think he have the chin to be in the heavyweight division? No. Yeah, that's that was an issue with John Volante. It was he, chin. he didn't have a chin to be at 205. Now, was he cutting too much weight, and is that why he didn't have a chin? That's maybe, yeah. It's also is, yeah. impossible. I mean, it's you've seen possible. what happened to TJ. Exactly. TJ took some big shots against Cody. He dropped down to 25. He took one shot from Henry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, cutting, cutting weight, cutting weight can, kill, can kill a fighter. So I agree with for you. For sure. So it, it's, it's really, you know, double-sided on that one. Is it maybe he was cutting too much weight to fight at 205 and that's why he you know didn't have the endurance that he should have and his chin wasn't exactly what it is now maybe at heavyweight he's a little more comfortable he's able a little more free with his diet able to do what he likes to do and be able to relax the way he likes to relax and he doesn't have to worry about this weight cut and he's more able to focus on just the fight see that's what a lot of guys going to 205 to heavyweight i like that jump yeah. more than i like other jumps because a lot of 205ers are just big and yeah. they walk around at 225, 235. You know what I mean? So if yeah. they added that extra couple of pounds in a muscle, the, I mean, look at John Jones. John Jones is probably 220 right now easily. Yeah. And we're having a lot of uh, light heavyweights moving up to heavyweights. We have Gustafson coming up for his next fight, Latifi and uh, Valente right now. People would think that maybe heavyweights would cut, would cut off weight, but uh, we have the opposite right now. Yeah, I mean... It is the way it is right now in the world of UFC, thanks to the Rona. Now, in the middleweight division, Brandon Allen, 14-3, and three, is taking on Kyle Deuskis. Uh, now, he replaces Ian Heinish. Ian Heinish was unable to fight. I believe he tested positive for the coronavirus, if I'm not mistaken. And that's why Kyle is stepping in last minute to take this fight. <clears throat> in my opinion, it, it sucks. I mean, I... For both fighters, especially Brendan and Ian Heinish, both these guys expected to fight each other. Now, because of everything we're dealing with this whole pandemic right now, unfortunately, he wasn't able to make the fight. His corner wasn't able to make the fight. Luckily, they're able to make these replacements. I mean, with having all these fighters, you know, just ready, willing, and able to jump in and to live out their dreams, it's, it's some of the greatest fights we're even seeing right now because a lot of these guys don't give a damn about the paycheck, and they just want to fight. Yeah, they just want to fight. I don't think that they don't care about the paycheck because, you know, at the end of the day, they need the money. But, uh, yeah, you know, Kyle stepped up for this fight. This is great. Listen, if he wins, he will be 10-0. and 0 which is a pr pretty Ooh. impressive uh, MMA record, you know. And the middleweight division, man. Yeah. I mean, the, you got Izzy, who's probably the only undefeated fighter in that division that I can think of. Is Marvin? Uh, oh, not, he's not undefeated, huh, because Marvin lost to Izzy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to bring that up to you one more time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I know, you, ha you, have to t you, know, you have to do that every time, you know. Just going to bring it. Yeah, just, just you know, put the bit of nuts, you know. <laughs> Either way, you know, Kyle, this is an interesting <clears throat> matchup. You, you, you know, you know all, what it's all about in this card. The, in this card, it's all about the co-main event. You know, let's talk about the co-main event, please. Mickey Gall, six and two, stepping in there to take on 
platinum. Mike Perry, 13 and six. Obviously, these two are going out at the welterweight division. Mike Perry is what on a one fight winning streak? Uh, did he win his last? Man, that's your boy. You should tell me. I don't feel like he won his last. Who was fight. his last fight? Was it Cowboy? No. Mickey Galt's on a two fight winning streak. I know that. Yeah, with one. Uh... He lost to Randy Brown. He lost to Diego Sanchez also. Oh, no, that's right. Okay, so listen, 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 yeah. listen. His last win was last year. It was against Cowboy. Yeah. And he got knocked out by Jeff Neal. And yeah, he lost, exactly. He lost to Vicente Luque. Yeah, that Vicente Luque fight was amazing. Amazing. He, he should have won that fight, you know, judging, you know, but whatever the fuck. Listen, uh, Listen what do you... when they asked Mike Perry about his girlfriend being in the corner, he said that she's just going to sit there and enjoy the show. Exactly. So, what the fuck? What do you mean? I don't know. Like, she will have the best seats in the house. That's what he said. He said, I want my coach to have the best seats in the house. Doesn't make any sense. What do you think? Do you think that, they, do you, listen, if the fight goes to the ground, I believe Mike Perry, knowing that we don't, you don't have the crowd right now, he actually may, may need a coach that would tell him what to do. Because exactly. Mickey Gall in the ground is no joke. And Perry is one of those fighters that feeds off the crowds. Exactly. So I feel like you will get a little bit weird. Maybe, maybe, maybe Listen, you know what? She's just maybe his girl peanut butter cup, chocolate chip cookie, and she has. Maybe she will just cheer him up. Maybe because he doesn't have a crowd, he's bringing her up just to cheer him up. And this is how crazy the man is. What if she's? What if? What if he's losing? What if? She, what if he comes back? He doesn't back give a the, fuck. He doesn't what give if a he fuck. Comes if he back. Loses. What if he comes back at the end of the first round and he's just getting fucking pummeled? What is she supposed to say to him? Hey, baby, you're doing great. I don't let me know. Just get that, let me get I, that sweat I, right there for I you. Want to see, I want to see, to see this so bad. Imagine if she gave him actually great advice. Like, you don't know what the fuck is going to happen because... This is going to be a that, fucking train wreck. It never happened A before. fucking train wreck. Is, Multiple hard. wives have been in corners before, but it's not just them. McKee goes in Sam's all the time, but McKee yeah. has a martial arts background. She has done this time in, time out. She spends every waking moment at the gym with Sam Alvey. What the hell has his girlfriend been doing? She wrestled in high school? She yeah. boxed a little? She, yeah, exactly. That's enough, right? I box a little and go to jiu-jitsu like twice a week. Does that make me a fucking cornerman expert? Do you want to corner Kamaru Usman for his next fight? Sure, why not? Because I'm sure he'd get some... <laughs> the hell am I going to yeah. say? Yeah, champ, just go in there and throw a one-two and take him down? Let's go, champ. That's all I have to say. Let's go, champ. <laughs> Let's go, champ. We got this. Oh, my Let's God. Let's get a this... prediction. Let's get a yeah. prediction for Mike Perry... Mike, Mickey Gall, I can't even fucking think of it. It's ridiculous. Mickey Gall, hey, Mickey, Mickey, you're so fine. I think Mickey is going to blow Mike Perry's mind. By a uh, submission win? No, by knock the fuck out. Seriously? Do you think that Mike, actually Mickey Gall can no. knock out Mike Perry? I, I, I think he's going to submit Mike Perry. I think he's going to hurt him standing up, though. Really? Mm. Maybe you a body what? shot. I think that, you know what, I think that Mike Perry may win by by knockouts in this fight in the first round. I could see it. I could see it. It's an interesting matchup. Both these men can get catapulted after this victory. I do believe that my uh, Mickey Gall does gain more from beating Mike Perry than Mike Perry would gain from beating Mickey Gall. I agree with you. Now I have to ask you one final question about Mike Perry. If he actually fights against Darren Till, do you think that he will just bring his girlfriend in his corner? Bro, he, he could bring God in his corner. Darren Till's going to murder that man. <laughs> oh, my God. I love you, Mike Perry. I, fuck, man. I fucking love you, Mike Perry. You're amazing. Because at this point, I don't think Till's making welterweight anymore. So yeah. Perry would have to go to middleweight. But they, they want to fight. They hate each other so bad because they wanted to spar and the other wanted to go to the spa. spa. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> come on, Mike Perry. I have just have one more. Have you seen Darren like, Till's uh, social media lately? 
uh, he is actually trying to become the number one MMA fighter with a, the like, with an Instagram account. He's trying to reach that black beast level. He's no, he's almost there. He's getting there. He's getting there. He's almost there. His Instagram is insane right now. Dude, it's fucking insane. I mean, just this, <laughs> like he's got too much time on his hands in quarantine. Somebody get him to that fucking Robert. If he beats Robert Whitaker, imagine. Crazy. Imagine if Darren Till beats Robert Whitaker and then like soundingly, convincingly, like knocks him the fuck out. Whew. You have never going to get him to shut up. We have the striking force. He is going to call for that Izzy matchup right away. We all want that. We all Anyways, want that. Yeah. Main event of the evening in the lightweight division. This fight was supposed to go down in San Diego. Instead, it's going to be at the Apex, UFC Apex for Poirier versus Hooker. Dustin Poirier obviously lost his last fight against Khabib Nurmagomedov. Dan Hooker won his last fight. Dan Hooker hasn't lost since losing to uh, Barboza. Yeah. And in that fight, I thought they could have easily thrown in the towel. I mean, Dan Hooker looked amazing the fight before that. He knocked, but the, so the fight before Barbosa, Dan Hooker knocked out Gilbert Burns. Yeah. Gilbert Burns right now is the number one contender in the welterweight division. Dan Hooker, after losing to Barbosa, knocked out Vic, went to a decision with Ian Quinta, and went to a de- five round decision with Felder. Here we go in another five-round fight. If he can get past Poirier, he says that he makes Justin Gaethje's claim as number one contender look like shit because he would finish a guy who beat him. I don't agree with him because, uh, listen, uh, what what poor, what uh, actually what Gaethje did beating Tony Ferguson like that. Nobody did that. Nobody did that. So you can't reach that level. Listen, Dan Hooker, I feel like I, I understand what he's doing. He's talking trash. He's insulting people, you know, to make his self know, known. He said that Tony and Connor should be calling him out. Listen, this is all bull crap, you know. Even though I, I enjoy watching Dan Hooker. He's Dan Hooker is... On the block. Yeah, Dan Hooker is a fucking legit and tremendous f- fucking fighter, but... Come on, uh, win Listen, this fight you don't, and then you we'll don't see. Beat, you don't beat guys like Gilbert Burns for no reason. You don't beat exactly. guys like James exactly. Vicks. For, he beat Paul Felder. I mean, we're talking about legit guys at 155 pounds and 170 that have been in the UFC at this point. He could very easily, with a win here against Poirier, be seated in that top three, top four. <clears throat> yeah. I actually... Uh, I actually believe him when he say he needs to fight against after this fight against a tony or a connor it makes yes. sense i agree with him but to say that they are the one who needs to call him out He's that's uh, you know yeah and listen what poorie let's talk about poorie what do you, if poorie wins this fight what do you think is next for him is, is it the same as dan hooker the next for him should be a guy like tony or connor i think yeah i think you could go nate if he wants to, I think that there's already, you know, they've they've been set yeah. up to fight once. Yeah. So I think honestly, I think either one of them can go Nate. I think you can go Nate with Hooker too. Yeah, but uh, you know, the those guys are top five, top six, maybe ranked lightweight contenders. They want to fight against a guy that will give them that opportunity to fight for the belt. A win against Nate Diaz doesn't give you right now. Nate fight. gives you that money though. So if I, you if I you if you can't get one of these guys to call you out, or you can't get one of these guys to sign on the dotted line, but mm-hmm. Nate Diaz is sitting there saying, "Well, fuck, I'll fight you." You're not gonna take that million dollar paycheck. Nah, of course you will take it. But listen, Nate Diaz, the problem is these guys. A lot of him, money in New Zealand. Yeah, but him and his brother are the toughest fighters to negotiate with, like to make them sign that contract. It's not easy. Let's get a uh, prediction here for the main event, Poirier versus Hooker. Um, you know what? I will go for this fight with uh, Dan Hooker. I believe a uh, decision win. I think Hooker's going to win the fight. I could see it you know, happening early. I think Dustin Poirier is already looking at other avenues outside of fighting. And I think that with his foundation and everything going on you know, through that, 
I, I really think that it's Dan Hooker's time to shine. No. And I think Dustin Poirier could be looking elsewhere. I mean, he's been in the UFC for a very long time. Hooker's got a three-inch reach advantage over him. Hooker is the one-year younger fighter, but in the UFC retrospect, he hasn't been under the limelight as long. He hasn't been dealing with all the press, all the bullshit that comes along with being a UFC fighter. The yeah. extra, the extra added pressure. And I think that that'll be the X factor. And I think him not dealing with all that excess will push him over the hump. You know, he's able to tune out a lot of bullshit. He's able to not worry about stuff to where Dustin Poirier has got a lot on his plate. And I think that might've been his downfall. I feel like, and this is just me. I don't know if it's true. I feel like maybe Dan Hooker maybe have more hunger in him than uh, Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier already won the belt, the interim belt. He fought for the title against Habib and lost. And I don't know what's his mindset coming out for this fight. So, listen, I don't it, think right now there's a man alive that has a, a legit opportunity other than a puncher's chance to beat Habib Nurmagomedov. Yeah, except for Connor. That's why I said a, a puncher's chance. Exactly. <laughs> now, I, I want some key names to watch or matchups to watch. Give me three All of right. them. Let's go. So, you know, I would go with Mike Perry because I feel like this is the most intriguing what the fuck moment that we may have in 2020 <laughs> in the cage. And that's, uh, that's saying a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that's saying a lot. Luis Pena against Karma Worthy, like you said. Ooh. Potential fight of the night. And you know what? Jordan Griffin against Yusuf Zalal. I feel like this fight is a very interesting matchup. Very first fight of the night. Kay yeah. Hansen versus Jin Yu Frey. That yeah. I think has the potential to, like I said, propel a future star in the strawweight division. Felipe mm -hmm. Lins versus Tanner Bozer. I really feel like there's a lot of eyes on those two guys. They could really be stepping right into the top 15 after a victory here. And as much as I would love to say John Volante's heavyweight debut, I have to look at the main event. I think that has the most implications afterwards. Whoever wins that fight really puts themselves right there as, you know, top three guys in that division and, you know, top three next in line for the title. So if he could, you know, get a title shot or a, a fight before a title shot with either, like you said, a Tony or a Connor, either one of these two gentlemen, I really think that they could propel themselves as the number one contender after Justin and Khabib finish or what they got to do. If Dustin beats Dan Hooker, do you think that he is more intrigued for a Conor McGregor matchup or a Tony Ferguson matchup? Him and Conor fought before at 45 yeah. and Dustin lost. Well, every every MMA fighter wants to get that win back after they lose to a fighter. And, you know, knowing how much money you can make after a Conor fight and knowing that Conor actually needs to fight for a, you know, to be a legitimate, legitimate uh, title contender. contender. Sure. And, you know, who, who better than a fighter that you already win it uh, against? So, yeah, I think that Dustin Poirier should push for that McGregor fight after this one. Anything else on UFC Apex 4, sir? There's nothing much. I feel like this card, people may think that's a little bit... Uh, not that good. It's actually a pretty legit card. The main Very event is amazing. Good. The co-main event, listen, just for that uh, whatever the fuck thing happening, you need to watch. And you know the the main the co <laughs> the prelims main event, like you amazing. said, amazing. So yeah, I would definitely watch this card because uh, why not? What the fuck have I <laughs> what I have? You didn't got shit else to do. I have nothing to do. There's now nothing on TV. This is the very last fight card until we get to Fight Island. Yeah. And the big, big three title fights that they have lined up for Fight Island. Kamara Usman versus Gilbert Burns is the main event for the welterweight title. The co-main event, Alexander Volkanovsky, is going to be defending his featherweight title against former featherweight champion Max Holloway. In a vacant bantamweight title, will finally find himself around one man's waist and it would be a bout between Petcher Jan going against the former featherweight champion Jose Aldo. 
Yeah, listen, the, those Fire Island fights are amazing. Like, can't wait for it. I feel like the whole week before, like the vlogs, everything will be super interesting. I feel like the, the media, ev everything, everything, like this is taking it to a whole new level. Bro, they hit us up to go out there. I was like, listen, international travel is a little expensive right now. I don't think we can make it. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, we actually feel like very proud just to be considered you know right yes like, yeah just have the like the, like we were there you know what i mean we were in the talks now just if have we would have had the money MMA, we could have done it <laughs> just have that native mma uh, just name right there you know with the big dogs that's that's uh that's pretty yeah uh, that's, that's a big huge. win for us hell yeah, yeah. i'll yeah. take that feather i'll put it in my cap exactly now uh that pretty much wraps it up for our preview we like i said have a bunch of interviews we're gonna have done i want to get alexander hernandez back in here i'm gonna talk to him uh he's got some big news i'll let him discuss it with you guys uh julian roberts obviously we talked about tomorrow landing quinones before his co-main event fight on friday we're gonna have an interview with him like i i've been saying uh like comment subscribe all that bullshit. turn on the little bell notification for our youtube do it for our Facebook and do it for our Instagram because we're trying to get more content out there and we need more followers to listen to our beautiful content and hear our goddamn voices and see our ugly faces and enjoy us on a weekly basis. <laughs> yeah. All right, knuckleheads. Will you guys have fun and uh, we're out. Peace.